If you look at the amount of conjugated linoleic acid in cottage cheese, you're probably gonna say that this video is completely null and void because there's actually not that much CLA in most cottage cheese. Well, here's the interesting thing. Cottage cheese is one of those foods that's a super food on one hand, but can also be super detrimental on the other. So what that means is you have to use it in the right place, but more importantly, you have to make sure you get the right kind. Let me give you a quick breakdown of why that is, okay? Basically, when you're looking at cottage cheese, you are looking at a casein protein. A casein protein is the protein with all the whey removed and all the other components removed. It's just the casein protein, like from the milk solids, which means if you have a good quality dairy, that can be a tremendous, tremendous source of protein and a tremendous nutrient-rich superfood, really. But if it's lower quality, then it can be very terrible because a lot of the bad parts of milk will store in the casein, BCM7, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So we'll talk about conjugated linoleic acid, the dairy fat that's in cottage cheese that can do a lot for you. We'll talk about the microbiome because that's a huge piece of it. We'll talk about how it digests in a very specific way that if you utilize it right with the right timing could be very, very effective. And lastly, we'll talk about how not all dairy is created equal. Dairy is good in some categories, but also bad. Anyhow, we'll break it all down. I do want to ask you to hit that red subscribe button and then also hit that bell icon. And this video is for informational purposes. I'm not a doctor, I'm just some dude on the internet that lost 100 pounds. All right, so let's break it down. What happens here first? When you look at cottage cheese and how it's made, it is simply taking milk and adding an acid to it that separates the whey away from the milk solids, and then there's other processes where it's cut up a little bit and more whey is removed. Essentially, you're left with protein that has no whey whatsoever or very little whey. So let's jump into something called conjugated linoleic acid for a second, CLA. CLA is one of the fats that is in dairy and it's very effective, okay? There's a study that showed that just 3.2 grams of conjugated linoleic acid per day can elicit a modest weight loss effect without really doing anything else other than having CLA. Now, why is that the case? Well, there's some theories out there surrounding uncoupling proteins and stuff like that, which we'll talk about in a second, but the point is, it's a pretty cool dairy fat that seems to help inhibit fat from being stored. Okay, so basically, it doesn't accelerate fat loss, but it temporarily might block fat from getting stored, which is kind of a nice little trick, right? But then there was an interesting study that was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research that demonstrated that conjugated linoleic acid may increase testosterone synthesis after a workout. That doesn't mean that you need to take CLA or cottage cheese right after a workout. It just means that having conjugated linoleic acid in your bloodstream could help promote testosterone synthesis. Now again, if you watch my videos, you know that I'm not always going to say that testosterone is the end all be all, but a little bit extra after a workout might not hurt you. It's at least gonna help you. So let's jump back to fat loss for just a second and let's take a look at the potential pathway because I know there's some biochemistry nerds out there that are watching this that wanna know why. Conjugated linoleic acid may decrease the lipoprotein lipase. This virtually means that it doesn't have the enzyme to store fat as well, but it also increases what is called the carnitine palmitoyl transferase activity, okay? This is what allows fat to get into a mitochondria to get burned. So if we upregulate that process, then maybe the fat is getting utilized more. It also can upregulate what's called uncoupling proteins. This is where your body generates heat from calories. So if we increase that, we increase heat. So maybe cottage cheese increases body heat. Okay, I will say not all cottage cheese created equal. A lot of what I'm talking about here in this video has to do with one particular brand. Okay, it's called Good Culture, but they have really done it right and added a lot of probiotics. So you can find them at your grocery store, you can find them at Whole Foods. I did put a link down below. I'll talk a little bit more about them in a second as I circumnavigate some of this other research because it is very important you don't get a low quality cottage cheese when you're looking at the big picture. If you look at the amount of conjugated linoleic acid in cottage cheese, you're probably gonna say that this video is completely null and void because there's actually not that much CLA in most cottage cheese. Well, here's the interesting thing. If you get a good quality cottage cheese that has lactobacillus or bifidobacterium added into it, those act as an intermediary bacteria to produce CLA within the body. There's a 2006 study that was conducted by Iwashuk now this researcher found that when lactobacillus or bifidobacterium were added into the diet, there was a 100x increase of conjugated linoleic acid in the body. 
just by adding this bacteria because it breaks down and helps convert linoleic acid into conjugated linoleic acid. So that means if you have a cottage cheese that already has some CLA in it from the healthy dairy fat, and then you have bacteria that's gonna help process it and convert other fats into it, it's a double whammy. So that's where we're going for this. Now the other interesting thing is grass-fed cows have been demonstrated to have 500% more conjugated linoleic acid in their milk. And what's really cool is the longer that they're grazing, the longer that they're on grass, the higher the level of conjugated linoleic acid is. But now let's talk about the proteins because this is where I get really, really excited because this could be a way that you could, <laughs> this could, <laughs> pun intended, <laughs> because this could be a way, no pun intended, for you to get a lot of protein in in a very steady, just supreme way. Okay, here's how it works. There was a study that took a look at subjects that were consuming a 50 gram glucose meal. Okay, and researchers gave them, along with this glucose, either turkey, fish, cottage cheese, or beef, or egg whites. Sorry, one more. Okay, now what they found with this is that when they added egg whites to the 50 gram glucose serving, there was a 2x increase in insulin. But when they added cottage cheese, there was a 3.6x increase, 360%. Now you might hear this and say, well, that's bad. We have a big insulin spike. In some ways, one could perceive that as bad. But when we're talking about protein, we have better insulin activity. That means we're absorbing more of that protein. In a controlled fashion, it's actually good, meaning you're more sensitive to the protein, not causing just a higher insulin spike that's damaging. You're more sensitive to that protein. So really wild stuff. But then there's multiple studies that show that just due to the physical, mechanical nature of cottage cheese, it digests slowly, which means that you have a steady release of amino acids. So not only do you get an insulin release in a very finite amount of time that allows you to absorb that protein potentially better, you're also getting a steady release of amino acids. That's why you've probably heard old school bodybuilders and stuff like that talk about having cottage cheese at night. It actually is quite effective to have at night because it releases amino acids for hours after the fact. So the rule of thumb is grass fed, grass finished, higher fat content so you get more of the CLA, especially if you're doing a low carb protocol, and then have it at night as your last meal. Again, to say it again, it's like Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. So use the right kind and then time it right in the evening so you don't have slow digesting proteins throughout the day interfering with your insulin glucagon response. Long story short, grass fed, grass finished, higher fat content, high CLA content, probiotic rich at night. See you tomorrow.